Hello! How you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I am your host, the Shoebox Poet, and we are going to be reading from Finding Peace Within the Storm. Yes. I'm here to regale you with tales of the fantastic. Yes. <clears throat> we start with anger. Anger. You cold-blooded person. How could you do this to me? I never should have trusted you from the moment I laid eyes on you. But you fooled me. You built me up, making me believe that you were in love. You broke my heart and laughed in my face, and I gave you everything that was in my power. But you made your demands much larger. And when I twisted myself for you, you refused them. I thrown them back in my face. I am very tired of you and your ways, and we are through. And don't expect me to return to you anytime soon. There are plenty of women out there for me. And I just feel sorry for the next guy who finds you. Now, this book right here, I wrote, well, this book, this poem, I wrote this after um, dating a girl for a little while. And then we, we ended up breaking up because uh, things were going, you know, she moved and to be with her grandmother and everything. But she kept on um, coming around every now and then. Which wasn't a bad thing. I mean, it was nice, you know, to talk to her and everything. But as I started making friends, and I mean not, and I mean platonic relationships, she started getting more and more jealous. So over time, you know, she'll call me up and she's like, oh, hey, I'm sleeping with this guy, or hey, I'm doing this, and you know, all this. And, and I'm like, I don't care. You know? I don't care you're sleeping with this guy. I don't care you're dating that guy. I don't care you're in this. Because you and I are not in a relationship anymore. And that was basically was the extent of the situation. So it finally got down to a point where I was just like, like, look, you did this. And then you expect me to be your friend or be in a relationship with you? No. No, because you show me that when you get pissed off, you're going to do things that common sense would tell you that we need to work things out. And you don't want to work things out. So what do you... So, no, I am not going to put myself out there with you. This next one is called Promise. From this moment on, I promise to love you forever. I promise to make you believe in me. This is my promise from my heart. I promise to love you and no one else. I will give my life so my memory will live on with you. This is my promise to you. I can be strong when your fears make you weak. This is my promise to you. I will love you always. No matter how much the weight of the world tries to crush me. I will carry this weight upon my shoulders but all because I have a promise I made to love you forever. And uh, this is a bag, basically uh, a promise uh, or a poem I wrote for a friend of mine. Well, he, 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 he knows about it now, but it, it's just like, you know, him and his, him and his wife were, you know, trying so hard to have kids and finally they have kids, you know, and, and it was just a promise that he made in, in the sense of what I can gather of, you know, uh, to this little um, child about loving this child forever. Um, even if it is, I mean, that's, that's the thing of being a father, from what I, I guess. I have never, I've had a moment with it uh, in doing that. So it was just, a, it's just a different kind of, thing when you're in that situation. This next one is called A Poet's Language, and I wrote this poem being at uh, in school at you know, MTSU, and I was just uh, doodling around on a uh, in my notebook between uh, classes, just trying to think about different things, because at this point we were reading out of a, I think it was either a literature class or a math class, one to two, and I was just 
um, taken back by it because this is the, really the first time I have really been introduced to literature and all the other artists or writers and authors that were out there that you know years and years ago you know that you didn't know about at this point you know a poet's language simple words written in simple form thoughts on a poet's mind love rejection sorrow and loss loneliness fear and anger thoughts poured onto paper a poet's language words from a heart my soul speaks his peace a voice that speaks softly through these words dreams without end that haunts us all and with this i breathe life into my poems and for that i mean you know looking at how the, you know the structure of the poems and stuff and and thinking about what the language is but when you do that uh, when you write something or when you're pulling yourself out on a page and showing people who you were or who you are as a person or as an individual <clears throat> excuse me um this next one's called faith um this i believe was written for a for a book or for a um for an anthology but never made it into it i think I, it never got published because i couldn't afford it and even though they had my permission to publish it it's kind of a, a wonky thing close your eyes and take a deep breath believe in yourself and the world will notice you open your eyes because a new world awaits you and don't worry i am here to catch you so a lot of times and i don't know why my nose is in this is crazy um, so a lot of times you have to have faith in believing in yourself and doing things and, and doing the things that scare you the most. And that's what I was trying to encapsulate in this poem, even as being short as it is. And also having, you know, family or friends that are there to catch you when you fall because of, you know, even though you fail, you found a new way to learn. You know? and, and learning that that experience didn't work, you just try and move on to the next and try to do better you know and if you know it's just like hey, that didn't work okay so let me try it this way this next poem is called live again and this is published in um an anthology through uh, green press which is poetry.com which is still a ground today uh it's a kind of a different kind of a setting where on there you go and you put your poem in you uh, so I had to go in and, um, you know, give feedback to other people and their poems and stuff. And, you know, so I, it's really cool. You know, now I really haven't done it lately. Live again. And I want to live again like I did before you by my side. I want to breathe again and I want to touch you again. And I, I like I did many times before. I want to kiss you again and feel the pleasure of being in love again. I want to live again with you like we did before. I want to dream so many dreams again with you as my leading lady. I want to fall in love all over again with you and only you, even if it's only for a moment before I lose you and die again. Now, in this poem right here, now, okay, yes, I published this in this. This poem was inspired by the song uh, Live Again by Seven Dust. If I really am I'm a, I'm a heavy metal guy, not a heavy metal, but a heavy hard rock kind of guy. And um, Seven Dust, their animosity album had that song on there called Live Again. And this for me was uh, something that inspired me to want to write something. There's also another one on there called Xmas Day, which was uh, really cool. And uh, there was like an anniversary concert that Seven Dust did a couple years ago here in Nashville uh, over at the uh, uh, Wild Horse Saloon. And they talked about the, uh, what was the reason, what was the inspiration behind the poems or behind the songs. And for me, that was really cool to go and hear what the thinking or the thought process behind those songs were. This next one's called Sucker. I am glad that you uh, I am glad that you have found someone that maybe he can make you feel the way you wanted to be loved. That was something you always said you can I could never do. This is how it should be better him than me. 
When it comes to your passions besides, you just might make the perfect sucker once he is done with you. So you get into relationships and uh, situations and after the fact, you know, when you, when you ignore the red flags, you're like, damn it, I was a sucker because I saw this, I understood and that was going on and I said nothing about it or I let it go because I felt the other person would, would change. You are not Bob Beeler. This is not this old house. You cannot fix anybody. And that was something I had to learn. It's up to somebody else to learn to want to change themselves in order to grow together in a relationship. So when, and, but there are people out there who manipulate you. So, and you don't, sometimes you don't see it coming. So you're, you're, you are, you feel like I'm a sucker because that happened. Um, so in this situation, the person that I was dating or it really wasn't a person I was dating. It was actually the, the dating apps. Cause he was a sucker. Cause you, you see that, Oh, this, you know, this many people like more are interested in you. So you pay the money to go on there and you find out they're basically bots to dead profiles that have been deactivated a long time ago. So you're, you're a sucker in doing it cause, because of that situation. This next song is called paper moon. Uh, there's a song from uh, Def Leppard on the um, Adrenalized, it's either Adrenalized or Euphoria, I think, I can't think of which, but it's called Paper Sun. This is my opposite thing, uh, my take uh, on that called Paper Moon, that uh, inspired me. Under the paper moon with uh, my heart of glass, you broke my fragile heart. And pretending that our love was only a play to make you look good. These pieces of me that I lay at, your, at my feet, this is all a lie. Then let my heart show you the truth under the paper moon in a garden of wishes standing on the scattered pieces of my heart. And I was looking at this about how um, you fall in love with somebody and then, you know, things fall apart and you're there and, and you know, basically surrounded by darkness because that's how you feel. And the only thing that's there to accompany you is the moon because that's the only thing, the only light that's there in the darkness with you. Uh, one more. Or maybe two more. Well, uh, searching. I'm looking for someone. I do not know who she is. Yeah, I somehow, I do know her. And that is why I'm searching for her. Maybe she holds the answers I need like the cure of this pain that I suffered and the undying love to heal my broken heart. And so I will not rest until I have found her. And a lot of times we go on these little quests and stuff and searching for someone and we think we find them, you know, we find that person. And, and then we're like, when we realize that this person is human like us, we're like, well, this isn't that person. I need to go look over here for this person. And then it, and it continues a chain reaction on. And not many people know this, but when I was, when I uh, dated my ex fiance and everything, I said, that when I, that year that I was going to meet her, I'm just like, okay, I had this feeling that I'm going to meet my girlfriend, I'll meet my girlfriend. And it went all the way on to like August. And then, uh, you know, two people, sh you know, showed up in my life and started trying to date. And as it got near the end of the relationship with my, my ex, I I reasoned that you know what if it, even if it ended now, then maybe the next person will be better, maybe the next person in a way. But then I learned that you you can't just go to situations like that bleeding on somebody because you got to heal yourself. And I looked at it and went in and healed myself before going in that that way. Last one, and this is called us. She kissed me and I felt love. What a wonderful feeling it is. And if this feeling is, is true, then I know that I love her too. Because only love hurts like this. Only love hurts like this when she is gone. I can feel her love because this is not a dream. It's all very real. And I can finally touch my dreams and hold her in my arms without worrying about losing this feeling. 
because we found love. And if you feel like you want to throw up at this point, I can't, you know, I, I don't blame you at all. But that's what I thought I found with the, with my ex. You know, you thought you, you think you find somebody that can, you know, that seems to fit things, but uh, unfortunately, we were a chemical mix. So I will see you next Saturday, hopefully. It might be a little later because uh, I'll be. I'm going to be at the Spine Bookshop at 27 South Lowry Street in Smyrna, Tennessee, tr inside Trellis and Vines. It's from 11 till 5 p.m. and we, me and other artists, will be there, um, basically selling our books uh, for the buy, for the Spine Bookshop. So definitely come in and check us out. Um, and meet me and meet my other other local authors who are wonderful and very talented group of individuals. I'm just started getting to know these these uh, these wonderful people. Um, May nineteenth, PSV um, in Nashville. I gotta look more over the flyer for that, but it's through a public um, library um, in Nashville. I could be butchering it, so please apologize if you see this video and all that, but please. And then the uh, Bill Peach from, uh, um, Bill Peach from uh, Festival of Books in Franklin in June. Those are the three events that I have coming up. Now, I really want to talk to you about um, the GoFundMe for the, the Spine Bookshop. Definitely, you know, the link is in the... the um, Caption the thing for this video. Go in there and donate to the wonderful bookshop. They are looking to move into find because you know, they're finally growing. They've grown so much they need to expand to a bigger building, and that's just to help Lindsay. Uh, check out my friends Sarah Aikenhead, Sherry Aikenhead, Bill Omar Miller, and Cassie in the Fire podcast. Their latest podcast is out there, or the link is in the uh, the bio too. My friend Jenna Jinx Portraits. And her wonderful things that she does. If you look over here at this, that's her. And it's like a Marilyn on the other side. So definitely um, I'll check them out. And Aria Simmons, Aria Simmons and uh, Alberta in the Ricky sections. I believe that is all that I have for you. But please look, listen, share all this. I will see you next weekend. Have a good day and be safe.